Hello and welcome to the Investing on the Go podcast brought to you by Fund Calibre. I'm Ryan Lightfoot-Brown and today I'm joined by Sudarshan Murthy, the Deputy Portfolio Manager of the Elite Rated GQG Emerging Market Equity Fund. Sudarshan, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. Uh, now, the team at GQG have a long pedigree of investing in emerging markets. How do you apply the lessons that you've learned over the years? Sure. If you look at what we do, we invest in uh, large and mega cap companies that we think will do well over a five-year time frame. Now, typically, these companies are very well covered in, in terms of sell-side coverage. You might have 40, 50 sell-side analysts covering these names. So no longer is uh, information an edge because information is actually a commodity. What's important is insights. And the way we go about it is, uh, firstly, we have built a team that's very diverse. And diverse in terms of how we approach the world, you know, where we come from. So for example, we have you know, four non-traditional analysts on the team who come with a, you know, previously with the investigative journalist background. The way they look at the world is very different from how a typical buy side investor looks at. We have a couple of scientists on the team. So one is having this diverse set of people. The second is we are bottom up stock pickers. Any name that we analyze will end up having multiple pairs of eyes. And that's very helpful, right? Because the diversity of the team, each one of us tends to look at the same uh, situation from a slightly different context. And aggregating all these views helps us generate uh, insights. The other um, somewhat unique aspect of how we do investing is, it's the same team that invests in our emerging market strategy as well as the developed market strategy. And I find that very helpful. There's a, there's, a, there's a cross-pollination of ideas that happen. But also, you know, we benefit from it. When I invest in EM names, the fact that I also look at US businesses actually helps me. And, and finally, to round off this question, what is it that we are trying to do? Okay. We are trying to assess the forward-looking quality of a business. So the question we try to answer is, how will this business be five years from now? Will it be in a stronger situation? For if so, why? So it's going to be a mix of qualitative and quantitative analysis that happen. Thank you. Um, that actually quite neatly leads me into my next question because emerging markets did very well in the first decade of the 2000s, um, but struggled more in the second with developed markets, in particular the US, very much taking the lead. Um, now, as we enter um, what has depressingly become the third decade of the 2000s, do you think that emerging markets are going to have their time again? And if so, why? I believe so. And you can see that in our actions. Um, like I mentioned, the same team that runs our global strategy as well as the emerging market strategy. And what you find is the weightage of EM names in our global strategy has been increasing, which shows that you know, we are optimistic of the opportunities there. Now, when you look back, right, in the last 10 years, the liquidity in the EM market, the, the composition of the, the large companies in EM has improved significantly. And you're seeing some truly innovative world-class companies coming out of EM. And what's helped it? You know, countries like China and India, large countries where you have tailwinds of you know, continuing urbanization, rise of middle class, just throws up a lot of opportunities. At the same time, some of the smaller countries, you know, you know, Taiwan, South Korea, have thrown up some really world-class uh, companies too. So as a, as a, as a bottom-up stock picker, uh, I do feel that uh, the operant set in emerging markets is interesting for us. And one of the big countries that makes up a large part of your benchmark is China. Um, what's your outlook for that stock market? Look, China has definitely benefited from their uh, rapid response to COVID. As the first major country to emerge out of COVID, you know, we can see that in the companies that we follow, you know, the country has by and large recovered. So that definitely helps them. But 
Also, China is the second largest economy in the world. Just throws up a lot of business opportunities at scale. Some of the tech companies in China, I think, are as innovative as the ones in the U.S., if not more. And what helped them is the scale. Many of them have like half a billion active users. China, as a, as a country, just has、uh, dramatically transformed itself over the last ten, twenty years. Now, one at the same time, about when we talk about China, we also need to be careful because U.S.-China relationship、uh, will remain challenging、uh, because we believe that the inherent conflicts of interest between the you know, the top two economies in the world. Conflicts in terms of high technology, intellectual property, and those are not going to go away. So, when we look at names in China, and, and China is by far the largest、uh, portion of our、uh, EM portfolio, we are very careful that these are domestic focused names. So they are somewhat insulated from the trade war rhetoric or U.S.-China relationship to a certain extent. That's good to know.、Um, I think perhaps at the other end of the scale, in terms of EM countries, the Latin America region、um, has struggled and has done for some time.、Um, what's your outlook for the region? Do you think it can see some level of recovery anytime soon? Brazil is the biggest uh, uh, market out there, and Brazil still has you know, has a lot of challenges dealing with COVID. Uh, but if you step back to right, 2019,、uh, people were market participants were very excited about Brazil because they, they thought that、uh, reforms will continue, will accelerate, and that really hasn't happened. So we don't see too many opportunities coming out of Latin. That said, there you know there are a few selective、uh, you know, businesses that 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 are exciting.、Uh, some commodity companies are interesting in that region. Uh, banks uh, could be interesting too, but by and large, you know, we are seeing more opportunities opportunities coming from the other parts of the portfolio. You know, predom- predominantly Asia focused, China, India.、Uh, you know, these two countries are pretty much、uh, you know, recovered from COVID, and, and, and there are definitely、uh, opportunities that, that are interesting there. And beyond this, the other、uh, other countries, Russia. Is another name where、uh, we do see opportunities. Okay, so maybe within those regions,、um, what sort of,、uh, sort of sectors are you looking for? Are there any sort of long-term, like structural themes in the portfolio? Yeah, look, we are we are a bottom-up stock because、right? we 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 we, go, we approach the world stock by stock. But then, when you aggregate and look at the portfolio, you know,、uh, technology and financials are our top two、uh, weightages. Now, in financials, uh, banks uh, in Asia, in EM Asia, they tend to be structural growers. You, know, you, can, you can literally take a ten-year view, twenty-year view of these uh, uh, banks because they're not cyclical business. You know, there's a, there's a long growth opportunity in countries like India, Indonesia, for for the banking system. So that's one.、Uh, The second aspect is technology.、Uh, if you look at the portfolio, now we own some really high quality businesses, very innovative, with deep moats,、uh, where we feel that you know, over the next five years, these businesses will have a strong, sustainable uh, earnings uh, growth, and they also benefit from the emerging themes like 5G, Internet of Things,、uh, semiconductors,、uh, and so on. And just going back to the, the financials point, we in the sort of developed market、um, uh, equities and stock markets, financials are treated as more of a sort of a value stock, and sort of it's okay because it's cheap. You think it's more of a growth stock? Can you just explain to us why why that is different in emerging markets? Sure. Look, countries like India and Indonesia are vastly underbanked, so the the growth trajectory for them is still very very、uh, large. So I can look at some of these banks, you know, let's say the Indian banks, and anticipate that they should be able to grow at mid to high teens for the next decade. So because you have that growth trajectory, that makes them secular growers. Okay, well, Sudarshan, that's been really interesting. So thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for having me.
And if you'd like to find out more information on the GQG Partners Emerging Market Equity Funds, please visit the website, fundcaliber.com. And for more from the Investing on the Go podcast, please don't forget to subscribe via your normal channels. Please remember, we've been discussing individual stocks to bring investing to life for you. It is not a recommendation to buy or sell. The fund may or may not be holding these stocks at time of your listening.